That's the next um, topic that we are considering, dyslexia. I'm, I almost didn't know how to pronounce it. Dyslexia. Dyslexia, okay. Well, we understand it's a learning disorder that involves difficulty in learning to read or interpret words. Maybe I had a little bit of it. This, what? This Many people likes... do and they're not even aware. Are you the expert? No, I'm not the expert. Okay, good. Let's, uh, let me talk to the expert. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, you will unzip it after now. Ben Arikpo joins us this morning to have this conversation. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you. It's nice to be here. But she wants to... Uh, is she correct? Absolutely correct. Okay, so you can unzip your mouth. All right. Yeah. That people <laughs> have dyslexia and they don't know. No, they don't. Because... Most people with dyslexia don't show any physical signs that you would say, I see. No, you know when we classify disabilities, they see people who are disabled, they see physical disabilities mm -hmm. or visual impairments. And so when you talk about this, uh, dyslexia, people think, oh, there must be a sign. One of the things my son told me when he was having this situation was, even when he tells people he had dyslexia, they didn't believe him because they didn't see any physical signs of disability. Okay, so what are the symptoms? Oh, good. What, first, what is it? Okay. Already, you defined it clearly. People who have dyslexia will struggle to read, write, spell, and comprehend because it's a brain condition. It's not a disability, neither is it a disease. So you can see someone walking on the road, I mean, in the offices. But many people mask it. In the offices, and especially when they are not given uh, enough care as infants or childhood, then they grow up with it. They know they have so they know something is wrong. I was speaking on but the they program. They can't tell. They can't tell. They can't put a finger on it. I was speaking on the program once, and then over the radio, and then somebody called later on to say, "Kush." He found he drove to the center and said, "Listen, I thank God that I heard you speak because at least for the first time I can put a finger on what is wrong with me." Mm. I've always known that something is wrong, but I can't say what it is. So dyslexia is a brain condition that makes people unable to read, write, spell, and comprehend. The signs include inability to even decipher sounds in words. You know, when we start reading, we start with the sound in the alphabets, okay. different from the sounds, the vowels, sounds. That is a total no-no for them. Give, give, give us an instance. Okay, for, for instance, cat. The word cat has three sounds. K, a, t. But the word call has a different, instead of C-A-L-L. -L. Well, how would you pronounce call? Why don't you say car? Ka. <laughs> because the first one is cat, a, sound. Yeah. The next A you see is O. O, how? English is not an easy language. No, it's not. Including the word <laughs> island. Exactly. Island. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, such things, you see, and in your brain, because of their cognitive skills, they find it difficult to decipher those sound codes. Mm. But it doesn't necessarily things. affect their grades, does it? It does affect their grades. Because first, if they can't read, I mean, they give you an exam question to read and you can't read it, you sit and wait. That's part of the challenge. They can't read. They can't write legibly. They can't spell correctly. And because they can't read, their reading is choppy. They count the words. And so those words they are reading don't make sense. So comprehension is also affected. In the end, wow. they take too long to even answer questions. So that's part of the things that parents are struggling with. And the challenge is, because they do not show any physical signs, they don't show any disability, as we say. Mm. So people don't, ah, recently a father told me when he came, his wife had been pushing, and eventually he came after the child had done the assessment. When I was giving him the result, he was looking at me. I mean, you could see the disdain in his face. At the end, he said, see, so you found an English name for my child's laziness. Wow. <laughs> I was, <laughs> I was taken aback. I said, sir, so despite it's everything I said, Despite the symptoms I showed you, uh. his inability to focus and concentrate. You saw that. He said, yes, that's laziness. He, does, he just does what he likes. Is this a class condition or it's just a condition? It's, it's a condition. It's not a class condition. 
it's not a respect of environment or quality of teaching. It's just that they, that's where the person is born. You see, God in his infinite wisdom has created people differently. Mm. He's created this ones also differently. There's a strength they have which we don't maximize. Our educational system does not follow that trend of developing them. And I don't want to talk about education today. Mm. <laughs> now, they are wired in such a way that they, are not follow, they don't follow routine. If they, that's why they do better in uh, objective exams. Because looking at the question in an ex objective exam, they can guess the answer. You know, nine times out of ten, they guess right. But when they get to the essay type question yeah. to write, some of them have a brain-to-hand coordination problem. The brain, they know it, but they can't write it. There's no connection between the brain and the hand. So they have to be taught how to do that. That's why when you ask them questions orally, they can answer verbally correctly. But then ask them to write right. that. That's where they struggle, because they can't. There's no connection. But it, uh, mm. as that father you talked about said, uh, it's natural for many people in our environment to think it is laziness. Yes. So how significant is that challenge with parents yeah. tracking that as an issue that they need to give con uh, con attention to? Now, let me give you typical statistics. In, in Nigeria or worldwide, the, the, the proportion of people with dyslexia is 10 to 20% of any population. So if you have a classroom of um, 10 students, let's assume, it's more likely that 10% of them, 20% of them have dyslexia. But recently, in one state in Nigeria, I don't want to name it because the research has not yet been published, the statistics showed that one in three children in public primary schools in that state show significant signs and symptoms of dyslexia. One in three. Now, why is it so prevalent in that community, in that uh, area? That's because the research was done in the first instance. It could be that it is a widespread across all Nigeria, but because nobody has done the research. We don't know. Yes, yes we don't know. Yes. But it's also because if you look at the way, I mean, I've, okay, let me put another factor in there. Teachers, 87% of teachers who came to our training in 2019 never heard of the word, nor do they know the signs and symptoms of dyslexia. 87%. These are the people we trust our children to. And most of these people came from private schools that are expectedly better than public schools. I mean, not in Lagos, though. OK. Um, yeah. uh, uh, this might well, be a little problematic. This question yeah. might be a little problematic. For how long has this been on? We have been at the Dyslexia Foundation. We've been running since 2015. I mean, for how long? If, can you backtrack how, for how long we've had this as a peculiar issue in Nigeria? It's always been there. In 2015, when we started this process, well, I, started, I came into it because I had a child with dyslexia. At nine, at nine years old, I didn't know. My wife was always telling me, uh, this boy is not doing well. I said, never mind. He will, he don't complain with his siblings. He will get over he'll, it. He will catch up. He will catch up. Yeah. And all parents, and that's the attitude of most men anyway. Women pick it up faster than men because women are closer to the children in terms of their education. Thank God. And thank God for good women. Yeah. But... The time she traveled, as God will arrange his own things in his own way, the lesson teacher traveled or fell sick and she traveled and I was given the burden to take care of his revision to go back to school. Of course, that's when I discovered it. my wife was correct. Yeah. And then I started looking for solutions for two years and I didn't find any within Nigeria. So I had to take him abroad and then to the glory of God, I came to a brain training program. I couldn't afford to do it there because it was expensive. The glory of God, we bought the franchise and brought it to Nigeria and put him on the training program. In five to nine months, he starts turning around. As we speak, he's 18. He finished school certificate. Hmm. He wrote jump and has passed his jump. Okay. So, so now, there is so, a so, cure. Okay. Good. Okay. Cure is not the word. You can manage. You can manage it. You can train the brain. You see, the brain is malleable. You know, the, the new science of the brain talks about neuroplasticity. You, the brain is like a plastic. You can mend it. You can shape it. Bend it. Yes. So by training the brain, which is the most powerful thing I found that helps people with dyslexia, just training their brain enables them to correct every deficiency they've had before okay. over a period of time. Quick one. Yes. I don't know how many, how much, how many more minutes they will have on this conversation, but you talk about taking the test. Yeah. For many, many people looking at me now 
who are already in leadership positions in their offices, in the private sector, in the public sector, and they may have been having issues themselves that they can't put a finger on. How do they take that kind of test? There are many ways of taking the test. One is, even in your home, if you contact us within your home, you can take the test right there. On our website, www.dyslexiafoundation.org.ng, there is an assessment you can take right on the website. Okay. that gives us an indication. And then from there, we can follow up to the next level. Right in your home, you can do it. You can bring the child to the center. Well, please Where is the center? No, 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 before you go, we'll come <laughs> to that center. Um, uh, please give us that website again. Maybe my director will be able to put it up so that okay. people can see how they can go there, take right. the test. www.dyslexiafoundation.org.ng Okay. If they go there, there's a section there that says free assessment. Okay. The free dyslexia assessments. If you click on that, it gets to a box. You know, you fill those things yourself. It will give us a result. It will post to us the result of your assessment. Mm -hmm. And then we'll give you a call and say, based on your assessment, this is what we see. We might have to do a proper, because that's only a screener, a highlight. It's a quick, quick and dirty assessment mm -hmm. that tells us you have or you don't have it. Okay. So we do that. And then if you say, okay, you need to get to the main assessment. In the main assessment, there are three levels of it. One, we test for the cognitive skills. Because behind every struggling and learning challenge is a cognitive problem. Mm -hmm. Whether it is found and rooted in autism or rooted oh. in... Yeah. Okay. Someone can be autistic and still be dyslexic. Some people are oh, interested yeah. now. Yeah. Dyslexia Foundation dot, dot, o -R -G o -R -G dot ng. Dot ng. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Now, so you are saying that dyslexia is connected to a number of other brain conditions. Yes. Uh-oh. Or the brain condition is connected to other learning challenges. Learning challenges. So you could be autistic and also dyslexic. Wow. You could be... Double you jeopardy. Could, yeah, you could have cerebral palsy and then you have dyslexia. Okay. Dyslexia is just that bit that has to do with reading, writing, spelling and comprehension. Okay. And most times attention. How far, if it is undetected mm. and consequently on, on, on taking care of, Untreated. not taking care of, yeah. how significantly does it affect someone's trajectory in life? Wow, everything. I'm honestly, see, when it's untreated, when it is not managed, at the time it should be managed. Now, you, let's, let's assume one of the greatest challenges we find today is the number of children who are out of school. Even if you take Lagos, for instance, why do people fall out of school? Most of it is traceable to dyslexia. When they oh. go to school, they are unable to read. The teachers join the class in making fun of them. They lose their self-esteem. The next thing is they run out of class to the streets. What do they do when they get to the streets? They find some activity. 80% of juvenile cases in U.S., and the research has not been done in Nigeria. I'm, I'm hoping by ex extrapolation in Nigeria are the result of uh, dyslexia. People unable to read. Yes, you I'm have not. helped us to scratch the surface. And yes. <laughs> if we didn't have another segment coming up, I would say we'll take this on continually. But um, um, this is we'll, definitely we'll have to we'll have to bring we'll you have back. Have to bring you back, please, please. to have this because this is an anymore. eye opener. Mm -hmm. Sincerely, oh. sincerely, especially for many many parents who've yeah. been wondering what's wrong with my child. Yeah. But well, just before I, I go, I'll say, that's one of the reasons why, as you know, October is Dyslexia Awareness Month. Okay. And on Saturday from 10 to 12, we're going to be having an open house okay. where we have created enough awareness on radio and, and all of this. So parents, if you're here and you want to join to ask a question or to clarify your doubts or even meet, for instance, a woman said, when her husband took a second wife, that's when a chicken ate her daughter's brain in the dream. And from then they... She couldn't read again. Such things. Yeah, so we want to clarify this. Yeah. So you know, we need to do that. So on the 30th, Saturday, from okay. 10 to 12, we have an open house. Just okay. the information is on our website already. You can register through there and be part of it. So that website again is dyslexiafoundation.org.org.org.org.org.org.org.org.org.org.org.org.org.org.org.org.org.org.org.org.org.org.org.org.org.org.org.org.org.org.org.org.org.org.org.org.org.org.org.org.org.org.org.org.org.
Well, Sunrise Daily continues for the home, home stretch. stretch. No, you're connected, so don't worry. You're okay. We'll be back. Hey, beautiful.